So, a couple of announcements. If you have, uh, did not notice on your way in, there are some offering plates in the narthex, and we are collecting an offering this evening. We're not passing the plates through the pews, uh, but that offering will be distributed to local charities uh, like Fish or uh, Friendly Hands or those kinds of places. So if you want to be generous with that, that would be great. So we have uh, Sun Julie here from First uh, United Methodist here in Torrington and some other folks from that congregation. We're grateful for your presence. Uh, Gia Hall, Pastor Gia Hall from Bakerville is just about here. <laughs> so she'll be here in, in moments. Um, and also we have Kathy Fierro uh, and Darlene Fullerton who will be presenting some uh, piano and solo music uh, as part of the service. So we're very grateful for their participation as well. So the service is structured. Uh, there, there are a few hard copies in the narthex if you really need them, but as you can see, we're trying to avoid using the paper uh, handouts and rely on our screens. The structure of the service will include a, a brief confession at the beginning, a few hymns, <coughs> three scripture readings, which will each be followed by a reflection by one of the pastors, uh, and then a series of prayers uh, leading toward the end of the service. So uh, we think it's going to be a beautiful service, and it's especially uh, more beautiful uh, that you are here to share it with us. So we will begin with a brief confession, and you are invited, if you wish, to stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Have mercy on us, O God. We confess that we have sinned against you and against our neighbor. We have built walls instead of tables and have turned away the stranger. We have sought glory for ourselves and have treasured that which does not satisfy. Help us to love as you love, to welcome those you send, and to treasure mercy and justice. Turn us from our ways to your ways, and free us to serve those in need. Amen. God who makes all things new, forgives your sins for Jesus' sake and remembers them no more. Lift up your heads and hearts. Yours is the kingdom of God. Amen. You may remain standing. Our opening hymn is in the red hymnal in your pews, number 879, for the beauty of the earth.
Welcome. Welcome, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome, my siblings in Christ. Can we exchange the signs of the peace of Jesus Christ by waving hands with a smile? Let's warm up this air of the beautiful sanctuary. Peace be with you. Thank you. The grace of Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Let's pray. We praise and thank you, God, for you are without beginning and without end. Through Christ, you created the whole world. Through Christ, you preserve it. You made the day for the works of light and the night for the refreshment of our minds and bodies. Give us now in Christ. Grant us a peaceful evening, a night free from sin, and bring us at last to eternal life. Through Christ and in the Holy Spirit, we offer you all glory, honor, and worship, now and forever. Amen. First reading for this evening is from Deuteronomy chapter 8, verses 7 through 18. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land with flowing streams, with springs and underground waters welling up in valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive trees and honey. A land where you may eat bread without scarcity, where you will lack nothing. A land whose stones are iron, and from whose hills you may mine copper. You shall eat your fill and bless the Lord your God for the good land that he has given you. Take care that you do not forget the Lord your God by failing to keep his commandments his ordinances, and his statutes, which I am commanding you today. When you have eaten your fill and have built fine houses and live in them, and when your herds and flocks have multiplied, and your silver and gold is multiplied, and all that you have is multiplied, then do not exalt yourselves, forgetting the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, who led you through the great and terrible wilderness, an arid wasteland with poisonous snakes and scorpions. He made water flow for you from flint rock and fed you in the wilderness with manna that your ancestors did not know, to humble you and to test you, and in the end, to do you good. Do not say to yourself, my power and the might of my own hand have gotten me this wealth. But remember the Lord your God, it is he who gives you power to get wealth so that he may confirm his covenant that he swore to your ancestors as he is doing today. Holy wisdom, holy word.
How are you today? Two thumbs up? Two thumbs up. Hallelujah. <laughs> What are you so thankful for this year during this pandemic? Still going on? What are you so thankful for this year? We have been in this pandemic, ongoing pandemic, almost two years. What are you so thankful? We are so thankful that we are still in the place of worship at this moment. Our hearts have not been changed at all. But we are in the place of worship, our God. We are so thankful for that. And we are so thankful for God's faithfulness leading us up to here. His faithfulness, His steadfast love pouring out at this moment for all God's people. During this time of a pandemic, We have experienced spiritual hunger and thirsty, haven't you? Yes, we have experienced the spiritual hunger and thirsty. Have you ever fed enough? What do you think? Are you full enough? Your spirit, your soul is filled with God's grace and love and peace and joy no matter what we encounter in this ongoing pandemic. Have you ever fed fully? We are about to have a big, big, big dinner, Thanksgiving dinner. You may yet You may think of the food now in your mind and heart. Oh, just a few days away. I am going to eat delicious food for my body. Are you thinking of that? Or are you worried about cooking? I hope that you have been fed spiritual food through the word of God. Like the Israelites experienced physical for hunger and thirsty during the wilderness time for 40 years. Deuteronomy 8. It is about obedience. It is about obedience to God's command. Follow me, observe me, remember me, do not forget me, what I have done for you. It is enough to be thankful for what God has done for us so far. It is enough to give thanks to God for Jesus Christ, with which we will be saved. God's grace is enough, more than enough. So we have a reason to give thanks to God, no matter what we encounter, no matter where we are in this very difficult, ongoing pandemic. My brothers and sisters, we have enough blessing to be thankful. The blessing is Jesus Christ. Israelites were fed with 
manner which it taught that man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Yes, they were fed with a manna during the wilderness time for 40 years. How long have you been on the journey of faith? 30 years, 50 years, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 years on the spiritual journey? You have been fed by God through the spiritual manna, which is the word of God that will not leave you thirsty and hungry. As you are willing to eat, as you are willing to have in your life as a, the most precious manna, for your spiritual nourishment. My brothers and sisters in Christ, let's remember, let's do not forget what God has done for each one of us through the Jesus Christ. And let's continue to have the spiritual manna, the word of God, day and night. So we will land the good land where God has promised to all of us through the Jesus Christ. Until we reach out to the land of God, we need to be strong, healthy, and beautiful. My brothers and sisters, keep your health, spiritual health, and keep your spiritual beauty through having the spiritual manna, the word of God. Do not forget, that will give you joy, peace, and strength. And that will nurture your spirit. Like a Thanksgiving food, what you are thinking of. Wow, joyous and pleasant and moment we are thinking, right? So my brothers and sisters, every day, enjoy the spiritual food, manna, the word of God, and be healthy, and be happy, and be holy. Amen? All the people say, Amen. Let's pray. Gracious loving God, thank you for your word, precious word that feed us every day. God, help us to seek you through the word of God. And as we seek you every day, God, feed us and strengthen us. We pray all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Some of you asked uh, what we are grateful for, and this song came to my mind a couple of weeks ago. Uh, called I am His and He is Mine. That's what I'm grateful for. Love with Everlasting love, led by grace, that love to know, gracious spirit from above, thou hast taught me this is so, all this transport all to find, all this full and perfect peace in all love. I cannot cease, I am His, and He is mine. In a love which cannot cease, I am His, and He is mine. 
Second reading is uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, six, verses 6 through 15. The point is this. The one who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And the one who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each of you must give as you have made up your mind, not reluctantly or under compulsion. For God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to provide you with every blessing in abundance, so that by always having enough of everything, you may share abundantly in every good work. As it is written, he scatters abroad, he gives to the poor, his righteousness endures forever. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way for your generosity, which will produce thanksgiving to God through us. For the rendering of this ministry not only supplies the needs of the saints, but also overflows with many thanksgivings to God. Through the testing of this ministry, you glorify God by your obedience to the confession of the gospel of Christ and by the generosity of your sharing with them and with all others, while they long for you and pray for you because of the surpassing grace of God that he has given you. Thanks be to God for his indescribable surpassing, surpassing grace of God that he has given you. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. 
Holy wisdom, holy God. Blessings, beloved. Blessings in the glorious name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I thank you for your patience. I I was on a journey coming here. (laughs) Following the North Star. (laughs) That was Jean. Blessings to you. Blessings to you. I'm Reverend Jalen Hall, and I'm Pastor Gia to the beautiful Bakerville Church in Bakerville. Uh, and I bring you greetings on behalf of the Bakerville United Methodist Church. So many of you are here. Wonderful. So now that I've introduced myself, uh, let me first pray. Will you join me? Oh, loving, gracious God, we thank you for this night, this opportunity to gather in this place. We gather in your name. We gather and ask you to just send us a special anointing of your spirit this night. Awaken us. Center us. Open up every orifice in us that needs to be touched by you. Yes, send your Holy Spirit this night. Dwell within us and among us. Let these words, these meditations, that are of you, Soak in us as we enter into this time, as we begin this journey of Advent, as we take time to give thanks. We ask this in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. So again, I I bring you blessings. As you might have guessed by now, (laughs) after listening to me, I'm not from around here. I'm from New York. Not the city. It's a big place. I was born and raised in the Burbs. I'm from, ready? Long Island. I didn't say Long Island. I said... (laughs) The youngest of three and the only girl. I had a very safe and sheltered life. But thanks be to God, one that was centered in God. And my uh, parents were, they grew up poor. Mom was from New York City, Spanish Harlem to be exact. And dad was from the deep south, Mississippi. He grew up on a farm, a plantation. So we had in this little uh, New York community of Long Island 50 families that included my aunts and my uncles and all of my cousins. Um, In this little community, there was a community garden. And it was on like a hundred, a hundred by 50 square feet lot. And my family, my godparents specifically, because they lived next door, they were very proud of this little community garden. Oh, we grew everything in there. If you planted it, you were responsible for it. Amen? You know what I'm saying? Corn, lettuce, cucumbers, tomatoes, everything you could think of grew there. Of course, my dad, being from the South, he had a smaller, very smaller 
a version of this in the corner of our stamp size backyard. And, and his favorite time of year wasn't harvest. His favorite time of year was uh, the planting, the sowing, the preparation. He said it it's the closest thing to touching God's natural creation. Planting a seed deep down and taking care of it vicariously as it would have to decide whether or not it was going to embrace the love and care that is being extended to it and, and grow from it. And then would come the luxurious fruit, good fruit, that comes and produces even more seeds to be sown. And in doing so, it's spreading that embrace. See, we can choose to return as seed and stay in the ground. Jesus teaches us that that's the easiest thing to do. It's the easiest thing, the easy way. Jesus teaches us, um, he talks about a parable of talent. Some servants have one or a more, and they wisely choose to invest or nurture them to produce more when others simply bury their talents. They do nothing. And they say, look, Master, I saved it just for you. Just the way you gave it to me. Here, take what is yours. Well, we know from that the Master chastises that servant, calls them wicked and selfish. See, it's so unselfishly Christ-like when we share our seed, where we share our talent. Christ also teaches about the scattering of seed on various types of soil. It's really, really hard and diligent work doing your part to cultivate and nurture that seed. You can't do it in your own strength. You can't do it in your own See, the soil has to be fertile. It's a good question for us to ask this night. Beloved, is, is our soil fertile? As we enter into this time of, of Thanksgiving, we, we must prepare our soil. Are we focused on truly being sowers? Are we focused not on the, the harvest so much, but on the sowing? Not merely to devour or to eat the seed. See, we were created to be sowers, to be sowers of good seed. After all, we have that seed of Christ in us, deep down inside us. Do we not? Amen? We have everything we need. We're abundantly blessed. No matter what we may feel, no matter what the world may try to tell us or make us think, we have everything we need with that God-created seed in us. We are seeded. The good news. That's the greatest news this night. As our God is so good, our God is so loving, and providing for us everything we need, everything to grow into our created purpose. We all have one. We all have one. We have the the ability to accept that nurtured embrace and to grow from it and, and buy it. Yeah, my, my daddy loved to sow so much in that little back yard of ours. Mommy didn't like it so much. But we also had apple trees and cherry trees. My grandmother made pies and turnovers and Daddy always cautioned us, 
not to just enjoy the eating or the devouring of the pies and, and all the things that come from the fruit, but to always remember to give thanks by replenishing the fruit, by turning to the source of it, to reseed and to fertilize, to turn over the soil, make sure it rests so that it can be renewed. Are you doing that to your soil, beloved? Are you making sure that you're renewed? When we turn our, our trust and our faith in, into the Lord Jesus Christ, we can rest in his goodness. We can rest in his joy no matter what's going on, no matter what our challenge is, we've got that seed, we're equipped. When I think back on that solid biblical advice uh, given by Dad to be renewed by the grace and mercy of our loving, providing God always. Rejoice in the Lord. Give thanks. Give, rejoice and renew. Renew and replenish. Keep cultivating that seed. You're special. We all are. You're a special gift from God. Be renewed by his grace and mercy. May it be so. In Jesus' name. It makes me think of that song. Please prepare me to be a sanctuary.
Please rise we read from Luke chapter 17, beginning in the 11th verse. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going to the region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten leopards approached him. Keeping their distance, they called out, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him, and he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, Were not ten made clean, but the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. Holy wisdom, holy word. Grace, mercy, and peace to you this day from God the Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Jesus is on his journey, meets these ten lepers. They cry out. He sends them to the priest. This is the the respectable kind of traditional thing to do. If you are going to be healed of a thing like leprosy, you're going to go and the, the priest will declare whether you are indeed clean. And if clean, then allowed to rejoin the community in the temple and, and at the other ritual uh, activities of the community. So off they go, and on the way, clean, well, whole. And it, it's of interest to me that, that Samaritan, perhaps because he's not of the Jewish community in the fullest possible sense, he decides not to do what he was told. Jesus said, go show the priests. The Samaritan says, I'm going to go thank Jesus. There's something freeing about that. When we get together in, uh, on Thursday, a lot of us are going to be in a very thankful mood, and we're going to say prayers at the table and, and maybe do some other kinds of, of thankful reflections. In, in my particular tradition, there's a, a lot of kind of uh, quiet reflection. We're a sort of a reserved tradition. So we might, some of us might find time in the day, maybe in the early morning or maybe later in the evening when things have been cleared away, we might find time to sit back and kind of say, ah, thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of my life. We'll look around at the home that we're in and the Remember the food we have just consumed and the family that is surrounding us and the love that is there. We'll give thanks for those things and our liberties, our freedom, our faith. But this Samaritan, we need to remember, this is not just somebody who had a passing illness of some kind, like a broken arm or a migraine headache or something like that. And I'm not saying those aren't significant in your lives if you have them. But leprosy, leprosy in that time and place, and still today in some places, it's like you've lost your life. If you're a leper in the time of Jesus, you don't go into your family's home. You don't go into the temple. You don't sit down at a Thanksgiving meal. You are separated from everybody and everything that you know and love and cherish. It is almost as though you have died. You're just short of being Lazarus, dead in the tomb when Jesus called him forth. Short of that, being a leper was pretty close. And so when these men were healed, it is not too much to say that Jesus gave them back their lives. They did not. I'm going to be generous here. The other nine, I bet they did thank God. They didn't come back and thank Jesus. They didn't quite recognize that Jesus was the agent of their healing. I'm not sure that they didn't thank God in some way. I bet they probably did. But the Samaritan, he really got it. 
He understood that Jesus was the agent of a renewed life for him. Now he could regain his family and his access to the temple and his access to his business and all the things that made his life a meaningful and full and rich existence. This all came through Jesus. And the Samaritan got that and turned around. It's as if he said, I don't really even need to go to the priest. I go to the guy that actually gave me my life. And he thanks Jesus. And if I were making this into a movie or a play, he would be dancing. I mean, he he gets on his knees in front of Jesus. He humbles himself in front of Jesus for a moment there. But I think that the rest of his journey, as he went back to his family, would be like King David, you know, when the ark came into Jerusalem and he was dancing practically in his underwear out there in the streets. His wife was really angry about that. Very unprofessional for a king to do that sort of thing. That's what I think this Samaritan would be up to. He leaves this encounter with Jesus and he dances his way home, singing his praise. His life has been handed to him. Fresh and new. There may be some people here who have been as low in their lives as a leper in the time of Jesus. And if you have been there, then you know what it feels like to come back from there. Many of us have not been that low. We've been pretty fortunate, surrounded by good family and and good fortune. We made a few good choices that have worked out all right. And so we get to sit quietly back and reflect this Thursday and, well, thank you, Lord. This is, this is a pretty good life. But like my colleagues before who both said, please remember, then I would ask you also, please remember that in a very real and profound way, there was a point somewhere along the line, maybe as early as your infant baptism but maybe somewhere later on down the line when literally Jesus gave you life. Gave you life. And all the blessings that go with it. We are a reserved tradition. We, we New England Lutherans especially. I'm not sure if, if the Methodists are, are quite as hidebound as we are, but we're we're, we're kind of careful about our expression. But I want to give you permission. If somewhere along the line in the course of this Thanksgiving festival, and of course during Advent as we lead up to the festival of the birth of our Lord, if you feel like doing a little dancing or a little singing and remembering that you are alive because Christ has made you so, whatever your ailments have been, whatever your Weaknesses, whatever your failings, whatever your faults, whatever barriers you've run into from others or from yourself, Jesus has given you back your life. You can sing and dance about that if you want. Give thanks and be whole and be joyous. And it is my prayer also at this time that as we look forward, there are more opportunities just like this one where we can be joyous together and not in our own separate boxes. May that also be so, dear Lord. We ask in the name of Christ. Amen. was a wretch. I remember who I was. I was lost. I was blind. I was running out of time. Sin separated. The breach was far too wide. But from the far side of the chasm, 
you held me in your side so you made a way across the great divide left behind heaven's throne to build it here inside there at the cross you paid the debt i owe broke my chains freed my soul for the first time i had hope thank you jesus for the blood applied thank you jesus it has washed me white thank you jesus you have saved my life brought me from the darkness into glorious light you took my place laid inside my tomb of sin you were buried for three days but then you walked right out again and death has no sting and life has no end for i have been transformed by the blood of the lamb thank you jesus for the blood applied thank you jesus it has washed me white thank you jesus you have saved my life brought me from the darkness into glorious light there is nothing stronger than the wonder working power of the heart of the blood the blood that calls the sons and daughters we are ransomed by our father through the heart through the blood the blood there is nothing stronger than the wonder work in power
tell you, those three pastors are quite a gift tonight, weren't they? I'm very thankful for them. Prayers of the people. Merciful Creator, make us always thankful for your loving providence. And grant that we, remembering the account that we must one day give, may be faithful stewards of your good gifts. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we humbly thank you for your goodness to us. Above all, we bless you for your immeasurable love in redeeming the world by our Lord Jesus Christ. For the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with thankful hearts we praise you, not only with our lips, but in our lives. Lord, in your mercy. God of compassion, whose Son became poor for our sake, give help us to see the face of Christ in those who are poor, and in serving them to serve you. Give us generous hearts so that those living in poverty may have adequate food, clothing, and shelter. By your Spirit, Move us to affirm the dignity of all people and to work for just laws that protect the most vulnerable in society. Lord, in your mercy. Trinity, one God, you show us the splendor of diversity and the beauty of unity in your own divine life. Make us, who came from many nations with many languages, a united people that delights in our many different gifts. Defend our liberties and give those whom we have entrusted with authority the spirit of wisdom that there might be justice and peace in our land. Lord, in your mercy. God, our creator, you have ordered spring t- seed time and harvest, sunshine and rain. Give to all who work the land fair compensation for the work of their hands. Grant that the people of this and every nation may give thanks to you for food, drink, and all that sustains life. May you so- with care the land and water from which these gifts, good gifts are come. And may honor the laborer who produces them. Lord, in your mercy. Triune God, whose will it is that humans live in community, bless family life everywhere, and fill all homes with respect, joy, laughter, and prayer. Strengthen the commitment of spouses to one another, that they may mirror your covenant faithfulness. Pour out your spirit on parents, that through them their children may taste their unconditional love and empower all family members to live in your grace and forgiveness. We ask this through Christ our Lord. O Lord, maker of all things, you open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living creature. We praise you for crowning the fields with your blessings and enabling us once more to gather in the fruits of the earth. Teach us to use your gifts carefully, that our land may continue to yield its increase. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of all the worlds. Guide this nation by your spirit to go forward in justice and freedom. Give to all our people the blessings of well-being and harmony. But above all things, give us faith in you. 
that our nation may bring glory to your name and blessings to all peoples. Lord, in your mercy. Lord. Almighty God, Lord of heaven and earth, we humbly pray that your gracious providence may give and preserve to our use the fruitfulness of the land and the seas, and may prosper all who labor therein, that we who are constantly receiving good things from your hand may always give you thanks. These prayers and all else you see that we need, we lift in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Most gracious God, we have gathered here this night in humility and in gratitude. We ask that you would bless the time we have spent together and bless us as we return to our homes. Bless us in the days to come, that way we may indeed live in your word, recall your gifts, and be faithful servants in your name. These things we ask in Christ's name. Amen. Would the two of you please join me up here? We will read these sections as they are marked in your book. So far, our Lord has steadfast in us and encouraged us to strengthen you to you. So live in common with one another in accordance with the truth of Christ. Amen. Amen. God of hope fill you all with joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The God of grace bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Hymn 881.
remember the poor. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord and your neighbor. Amen. Amen.